there are a lot of different reactions that people use to talk about limiting reagents. This is one that I like doing with my students. And I always do the uh, baking soda and vinegar as well. But this is an additional one that the kids really get a kick out of. And it also gives me a chance to talk about combustion. What I have is two large test tubes that are just full of water in a pie dish, and I'm using calcium carbide. Now, calcium carbide reacts with water to produce acetylene gas. And if, if you look at the board behind me, what I'm really doing is I've got the calcium car uh, carbide generating the acetylene gas, and then I'm going to burn the acetylene gas. Okay, so that's what's going to happen with the gas that I collect in the test tube. Please make sure you don't get the calcium carbide wet, though. You don't ever, you want to wear gloves because if your hand's wet and then you touch the calcium carbide, uh, you can get a burn and it's not fun. I had that experience once. So what I usually do is I put a little bit of the calcium carbide in a container that I can easily get things out of and then put the top back on and get it out of my way. And I'm going to put just a piece of calcium carbide under these test tubes and, gen and collect the gas generated. So if you look, and you can see bubbles forming immediately here. And you can see that solid preci uh, precipitated the calcium hydroxide. So I've got two test tubes and catching the bubbles. It does get really messy after a while, so it's harder to see where the pieces of calcium carbide are to catch. Okay. Right. Now, I usually ask my students now, which one of these do they expect to give me the loudest pop or bang, since I'm going to ignite it? And I need a wood splint for that. Okay. And invariably, the students think, oh, the one that's completely full, that one's just going to give me a lot. So I test it for them. All right, so let's take this one and see what happens. And you see it burns at the mouth, because it's only going to burn where the oxygen and the gas mix. And it's quite a dirty flame, okay, indicating incomplete combustion. Okay. And let's t this one has almost no acetylene gas collected, right? Let's see what happens when I try that one. OK. All right. I didn't quite get the right mix because I still have incomplete combustion, but you heard that little pop sound, I think. Okay, so it's, it's a cleaner flame. And what I do is I try to see if I can't get just the right mix. Because if I get just the right mix, I ought to get complete combustion, a nice, clean burn, and a very satisfying pop. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that I've got a little I've got a lot of air in there right now because I'm only going to collect a little bit of gas on this one. And it's kind of by feel in terms of how much you have to collect, but having done this a few times, let's see if I got that one right. Okay. Okay. And notice how clean that test tube is. Okay. 
So I talk about limiting reagents and the fact that I had enough oxygen in here. And if they look back at the equation, we can see that we need five oxygens for every two acetylenes. And then we have to remember that air is only 20% oxygen. So that's why so very little acetylene was needed in there in order to you know, use up the oxygen that was in the test tube. So that stoichiometric mix gives you that really satisfying bang, which the kids are always looking for. So that's one way to demonstrate limiting reagents. Thank you.